G'day all, welcome back to the FX build, or the year of the FX. Okay, a few things have changed here. Uh, I've sped this up to about 16 times normal speed. Uh, looking at a few other people's uh, videos on how they're doing things, and one guy mentioned that he speeds these up to like 10 times. Unfortunately, I'm using Movie Maker, which only uses around about... Um, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 times speeds. So, yeah. So, that's why it's going a lot faster. So, here I am uh, outlining the panels of uh, thin black and now going over with RLM02, which is Gun Z76, I believe. Uh, just lightly filling in the panel uh, panels and going over it with a bit more. This is now moving on to Gun Z4. 422 I think it was which is the uh, light green color of the upper surface I've uh, done a lot of masking there as you can see underneath and quickly moving around uh, a few mistakes I've made in this uh, one is that scene right there uh, where I was actually down the uh, paint booth painting away recording happily and didn't realize the camera had a full memory card so that's why you didn't see me paint on the duck dark green. The dark green is actually around uh, Gunzy 423 I think it was, which is a dark green. So here I am, I just actually masked up and painted the white and black uh, defense of the Reich markings on the back of it and peeled off all the uh, masking tape. I uh, then gloss coated it with uh, Gunzy 30 which is clear gloss uh, in preparation for this stage here which is the decaling. So I'm using Gunzi uh, Mark Setter, I think it was, and Mark Softener. The Mark Setter goes down first, that's the blue handle one that you can see there. Uh, I'm putting the decals on, followed up with Mark Setter. Oh, sorry, Mark Softener, which is the green handle one. There's not much in the way of decals in this old FX kit. Uh, I did make a mistake. The wax paper that was used to cover the decals during transport, etc., it stuck to the decals and so I forgot to clean them up before I applied them as a result they went on with a bit of uh, that wax paper still there uh, it became hard to get them off so I was using um, Mark Softener for a while trying to rub the wax paper off I got a lot of it off I uh, ended up doing uh, some sand like sanding the sandpaper over the decals to remove the some of the material, gloss coated again, did some more sanding, did another gloss coat, sanded a bit more and ended up just doing a flat coat after that. I normally do about um, three or four coats of Mark Setter over all my decals and as I'm putting them on, start with one, apply Mark Setter, put the second one on, put Mark Setter back on the first one and Mark Setter on the second one and I keep doing about three or four times per decal. Uh, just so it gives it a chance to conform to the irregularities of the surface. Okay, I moved on. I uh, actually flat coated it now uh, with Gunzy uh, 20, I think it was flat clear. I did try the Tamiya rattle cans, the TS80. Uh, however, though, it ended up separating on the model so I had to stand that back and finish it up with a, uh, the Gunsy. So uh, the lack of colour, the lack of clear failed me this time around. So I'm using here the Tamiya weathering kits uh, to apply soot and oil stain. I put down oil stain first to show the stain from the engine exhaust going over the wing etc along the fuselage then followed up with soot. I tried to put a bit of a gradient there just so that uh, it appears that the soot was not fully apply, uh, fully affecting the aircraft. Uh, then use the soot again to do the machine gun um, stains and also some oil I think it was again to do the exhaust stains around the cowling. Uh, here I am using uh, oil paints so I got some uh, burnt sienna I think it was. I applied it in stripes uh, and use the cotton bud to draw it down just to show that oil stain was moving along this surface with the aircraft in flight type thing. 
I wasn't exactly happy with this, even after I finished, I wasn't exactly happy with that fin uh, finish. So afterwards I went back and used some thinned down black and burnt umber to replicate oil stains and hand painted on a few streaks I just indicate that oil was leaking out of the aircraft. Here I am using a, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, it's a polishing compound for Arctic, Arctic in, um, frames. It's silver basically. So all I'm doing here is just randomly adding uh, silver chipping to throughout the model. So wiping it on, dabbing it on a type thing. Just to show you a bit of, a bit of weathering. I went a bit heavy around the cockpit there. A good thing about it was it, this stuff cleans off with that enamel. And I also did it inside the um, gun troughs on the front nose there. I'm now sticking on easy line. This is to do the uh, aerials. So there's two aerials going on. One from the back of the uh, canopy through to the tail. And another one goes from about mid-section of the fuselage up to this line that I just stuck on. So I'm using super glue here. I stick it through that hole. There's my, uh, my head's getting in the road there. And this, this super glue, thin super glue is work, uh, quick to work with, easy to work with. Uh, allowed me to do this within a few seconds just to put everything on, tighten it. Easy line's good because you can pull it quite, um, well, pull, pull it to get your tension on, and it's not going to lose tension, it's going to have that elasticity to it still. So I'm just taking off all the. Uh, masking off the canopy and there was a bit of paint bleed underneath the canopy so I had to clean that off there and realised I missed one of the fr uh, frames so I have to paint that in by hand I just thought about masking it, it wouldn't work so I went to um, paint it on by hand and then use its toothpick just to rub off the acrylic paint uh, using Humbro Clear here just to finish up the canopy to give it a bit, give it a bit more uh, clear look Went back to the fuel tank. Fuel tank I hadn't even touched at this stage, so I painted it with the uh, RLM um, 02, I think it was, or was it something else? It's the uh, Gunzi 76. Then went back with the uh, lighter uh, color, which was used. Sorry, the color that I used in the cockpit to do the work, do the attachment for the drop tank. I should. Um, if you lost, uh, not, <laughs> sorry, uh, with the drop tank as well, I actually used a toothpick to create a fuel cap on it because it wasn't one molded in. So I just used a bit of liquid cement. Um, here I am doing it now. Uh, oh no, I'm not I'm painting that second colour on. That's right. Uh, putting in the pitot tube. This pitot tube broke off during construction, so I'm just gluing it back on again. Applying it with a bit of super glue and painted it up. Okay, now putting the uh, fuel cap on. So, th there's the toothpick. Using some liquid cement on the toothpick and to melt the plastic and to create a little dimple in the plastic to represent a fuel cap. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to weather this, I'll attach it to the model. I'm going to weather it so it looks like the fuel was spilt out of it. Uh, and have some, there it is there, the fuel being applied. Same way I did the underside of the aircraft with the oil stains. And that's about it, I'm just finishing up a bit of weathering here, cleaning up. And looking at it, what else do I need to do? Not much, just fix it up and there she is the beauty shots unfortunately though the digital camera I'm using here was, was actually a webcam camera so it's out of focus a bit I apologize for that uh, I'm trying a few different things with this episode as well or these videos trying to change how I do my formats etc uh, I'm going to stick with this highly sped up version uh, I'm sure you uh, had some issues with watching three episodes of me constructing and for about 20 minutes each so I'm going to try and bring everything down to the entire construction, build, everything else done as videotaped and shown to you guys within about 20, 20 minutes. So, uh, this kit uh, came up quite good, surprisingly, that's an old kit. Uh, I tried a lot of different s skills in here, sanding back the finish, sanding back the primer coat, 
engraving lines, rivet lines, etc. So uh, I'm I'm quite pleased with this. Uh, I definitely would do it again. Uh, uh, and yeah. So leave your thoughts. Uh, I'm starting to ramble now. So say, leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. Uh, do you like the new format that I just did in this episode, which is basically everything done within 10 minutes, hopefully? Uh, if you do, just leave your comments behind. And otherwise, I'll catch you on the next one, which I'm still at this stage still trying to figure out. But it may be the JU87 Stuka in the same vintage as this one. Okay. Uh, once again, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the flip side.